Cool. Cool. All right, week um, 11 of Project uh, Life Code K Payday. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> so this week we did uh, service. Service, acts of service. How was that, Jonathan? Oh, man, it so was. So much service. <laughs> it was interesting. I, I had a cool week. Yeah. Uh, I actually, to be honest, I didn't do it as much as I thought. Like, I remember okay. last week we talked a little bit about. You didn't like service that much. I, not that I didn't like it. I liked it. It just was not for some reason. I did not. I wasn't able to focus on it. I think we talked about the whole thing about remember the Michael Neal story of the person who found the gold and the diamond and gave the diamond away, and we came up with the whole money. It's not about how much money you have, but your ability to create money. financial. Yeah, that security. that seemed to stand out more for me than the service so yeah maybe service was not as important but what i did so basically last week i was like you know what i, I really needed to somehow get this money thing down and i finally started like just go out there and started taking action and okay I got, you know i had interview after interview after cool. interview at a bunch of places and i actually ended up getting a job nice and it pays you know, a base plus a little commission or oh, actually, no, it's a base or commission depending on oh, yeah, I had what you sell, before. but it's a telephone sales company. And, um, I just got off work literally like right now okay. and it's, it's easy or I should say it's simple okay. as far as what you need to do. You take calls, you know, call after call after call. Yeah. But at the same time, it's very, um, how do I put it? You gotta be able to take a lot of rejection too. Wait, yeah, you're the guy who everyone hates now. Huh? Yes. So everyone's always like shitting in your yes, face. Yes, yes. I'm the guy that people will be like, oh, take me off your list. You call me every day. There's people that. Dude, you know, that's a scream. really hard job. It's difficult. It's it can how be difficult. How many times did you get rejected? Like fifty? Many, about fifty fi today. How many calls did you have to make? Today I had only about seventy. Seventy calls. I think on average it was like the guy I, I was watching yesterday. He took 140 calls made three sales wow. right but I mean most I mean you gotta look at a lot of there's a good percentage that's hang-ups uh-huh uh, there's a good percentage so like you say like 25% just hang up so you don't really talk to anybody and then there's another 20 25% maybe even 30% which are follow-ups like oh I need to talk to this person oh can you send me an email follow up with them and then there's a very small percentage of sales, and then there's that probably about a good 20% of take me off your list, don't call me anymore, that type of thing. Well, this is interesting. This is like confessions of a telemarketer, you oh, find yeah. like a newbie. Yeah, be a, a great newbie title telemarketer. For confessions of a newbie telemarketer. Yeah, it's, it's interesting because like, I've never, yeah, I never this wanted is him. to This is him, the guy calling it. you. It's me, it's me. <laughs> And it's it's really interesting to see the people there too. They're very. Um, what are they like? What is the company like? Shoot. Before I get into that though, let's before I get into that, I want to talk about the week, okay? okay. Because there's a couple of things I, I do want to put out there. Like I was trying to be of service, and uh -huh. how can I be of service to people? Yeah. And and then start taking action on on this whole money thing. And what was actually kind of cool was, during the weekend. I had no plans. It was my birthday this oh, past weekend. Oh, no way? What the fuck? So I didn't have any Sorry. plans. No, no, no. <laughs> I was on Facebook, it's so cool. I didn't know. It's cool. Uh, I, I had my birthday and ended up... Actually, I wasn't planning for anything. I was just going to like kind of hang out, relax. Oh, okay. And actually, a bunch of people actually called me and they're like, Hey, man, what are you doing? Happy birthday. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to relax. And one of my friends, Jack, he was like, Hey, you want to come to San Diego? I got a room. Come on down. I want to treat you to dinner. Mm -hmm. And we ended up somehow going to a concert, like a Lil Wayne and Drake <laughs> concert. Can't. And then we went up to like this super awesome restaurant called the Ocean Air in San Diego, like super like high end, fancy, you know, two, three hundred dollar meal type thing. And it was crazy because I had, I was not expecting that at all. And, and you know, my friend really like, he just took care of me. Like as far as money goes, he was just very generous about it and just was like, all right, cool. And I was like, wow, that's very, very nice. And then the next day I ended up going out with another group of friends um, who treated me out to a nice dinner also. So it was just like, really, it was kind of cool. I was like, wow, we're, what, what's going on here? Um, 
It was your birthday. Yeah, I guess it was because of my <laughs> birthday. But it was just that's like what happens on birthdays. Yeah, I mean that's I, that's cool. Not for everyone though. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Cause I, mean, I, I like my like it's kind of weird, but even like I mean my parents definitely they'll always take me out to dinner. That's like who I'm used to. But like for other people, it's just you know birthday's kind of hey happy birthday come yeah. and go. I, I guess I do that right. Like <laughs> I'm the one that's like hey happy birthday man. Or, you know let me treat you to dinner. That, I can get the dinner part, but like, come on, let's go to a freaking super fancy restaurant or let me take you to a concert. I never really wow. had those ideas before. Uh, I have some pictures. We'll I have... In the video. Okay, cool. I got pictures. I got little video clips. Um, yeah, Drake and Lil Wayne, man. It's actually pretty, pretty cool. Uh, it was crazy. So that was the weekend. And then, and it was like last week I was kind of open and, you know doing my thing, doing my real estate. And then this week I started my job and it was just like, boom, like pat, like now, like I get up at six in the morning. I, I'm, I gotta get to work at seven thirty. I get up at four thirty. I'm on the phones for pretty much like eight hours. And it's, it's like, you you start losing your, actually today was my first day of calls. Yesterday was training. Uh -oh. Today was actual calls. Um, I did make a sale. Cool. Uh, with the help of a friend to a uh, co-worker to close. How do you like make sales? Oh, dude, it's. Sad. Did you get lucky or what? It's Does yes it feel and sorry no. For you? No, it's <laughs> not that. It's uh, it's okay. So the, the it depends, right? Like telemarketing works. The reason people do it is because it works. Okay. Okay. Now, is it considered the greatest thing? Probably not, because the problem I've noticed is your leads. Uh huh. It's all about the leads, right? Like if you're going to, like in your industry, you're not going to target a 25 year old that has no kids, right? Like, or or a teenager. Oh, okay. I don't want to target like a uh, high schooler who has no money. Okay. There you go. You know? You're not going to target the guy that hates Disney basically no. or cartoons or yeah. anything of that sort. You're not going to target that type of yeah. person, right? And you're not going to target that person over and over and over again. Doesn't make sense. Doesn't make Waste sense. Waste time and money. Exactly. But the way the telemarketer, telemarketing industry goes is they, I, this is my belief, I, I don't know for sure, but this is my assumption of it. They buy these lists, Yeah. right? These big lists of public information from, and these are all public, you know, they're all from public directories. Okay. You know, yeah, they're in the yellow pages, white pages, but I guess people collect, you know, millions of phone numbers or whatnot. And these marketers will come and they'll buy, they'll buy these lists and put them in an auto dialer. Okay. So then they just, you know, you get people once the auto dialer's set up, boom, you go. And then that's when, you know, we don't actually make the calls. The calls are actually on what's called a robo call, which okay. is an automated call. We'll say something like, hey, you know, this is whoever the person is, you know, this is John or this is Sharon or whatever the person is. And they'll say, if you want to click, you know, press one, if you want unlimited Google clicks, front page Google clicks or something like that. Okay. And then they'll press one and come to us. Now that, if it's a list for the first time works, right? Okay. Because that's how they qualify the lead. However, once you use it over and over, these people have received these calls and we're not the only company that does this. Uh -huh. There's probably hundreds, maybe thousands of companies that do this. After a while, it gets kind of old. Mm -hmm. So now you get people that, are pressing one not because they want information because they want to tell you to take take you off their uh, take them off of the the list you know you put them on the what's called the DNC the do not call list for some reason I don't know how or why but these numbers when you put it in and you take them off I I don't know if they get recycled I don't know how that works uh, but when you get to like you know four or five calls. And like, if, if you're a consumer and you receive that many calls, you get annoyed, you get angry. And I totally understand that. So it's interesting. It's a, it's a new experience. I've never, cause I've done door to door and I get door to door too. Like it's, it's pretty bad too, but at least you're in front of the person and you can kind of like gauge their reaction, their response. Uh, this is, and I've done cold calling which is cool too, because you're actually calling the person for the first time though. It works yeah. It's usually the first time. Yeah. And it's like, Hey, this is Jonathan from this company. And I'm just giving you a call today to let you know about our service. And they'll be like, oh, okay, not interested. It, you know, but when it's a auto dialer, it's all of a sudden a whole it's like different. 1%. Ballgame. 
I feel like cold call is like maybe you get like up to 10% sometimes. Uh, cold call would be about uh, for conversion, like actual sales. Yeah. You're looking at about, no, not even 10%. You're probably looking at about five. Five? Five yeah. is still pretty good. Yeah, yeah five is pretty good. Three to five. It'll be three to five. That's pretty good. Um, direct mail marketing is about three percent. Yeah, also three to five response rates. That's not bad. Response. That doesn't mean they're going to buy. It's just, oh, you know, yeah. it's a response. So it only works for certain industries. Okay. Right, unless you're you're everywhere, like and franchises. Robocall, Robocop. Robocalls <laughs> are what is that like? Point that's 1%, like 1%? okay. We'll put it this way: on average, a person. Well, it depends on the list. Uh huh. Right. If it's a brand new list, it can actually be very good. Like I got probably about four or five calls in a row uh -huh. that were pretty soft. Like they were actually interested. Oh really? I mean, they were kind of like, oh, how much does it cost? So what we're selling, by the way, is SEO. Oh, okay, yeah. I so think into that. it's about putting your list, and we only focus on the local region. Uh huh. Okay, so we're not doing national. We're not doing the pay per click, the AdWords. That's Google's. Okay, we're not Google. But what we do is we we get people onto the first page results of Google. Okay. Right. The the what's considered the map list. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know the little A B C D. That's called the pinning it's business process. Business owners. Is that business owners. Exactly. Okay. Exactly. Business owners. So okay. their name. Their uh link to their website yeah and their phone number uh -huh. will be on this listing and we give them basically 10 categories or keywords mm -hmm. keywords or key phrases you know because sometimes a keyword can have multiple words in it some people get confused by that okay so and also we include a free website for people if they don't have it we we make it for them too that's oh. also included oh, okay now it's uh, the price is you know a couple hundred bucks a month uh -huh. uh, I think it's one fifty nine. Okay. Uh, which isn't that bad when you compare it to if you're gonna hire an actual marketing manager mm -hmm. that may or may not give you results. We guarantee our results in writing, mm -hmm. so there's a contract on that. Um, and I'm just saying this because this is like part of the freaking whole pitch, right? So that's what we provide. It's a decent service for certain industries. That's what I've noticed. It's good for certain industries. Like what? Um, so a couple good ones would be one that's really popular are vape shops. Oh, okay. So like retail stores. Retail stores. Retail stores. Restaurants are pretty good, but at the same time you already have Yelp, so Yelp is kind of like the bigger thing for them. Uh huh. Uh, but we add on to that. Oh. Okay. You know, so let's say like um, for for a vape shop, anybody types vape or you know uh, the the, uh -huh. the the little vape or the e cig or whatever that industry you type it in and what it does is it searches within Google searches within a certain radius mm -hmm. and then the top seven will come out you'll see the A B C D E F G and what we do is we guarantee that you'll be in one of those top seven because it's used Google's literally used as, as an, uh, a modern day phone book yeah right nobody goes into the yellow pages and look for oh I'm gonna look no we just go onto our phone we freaking Google what we're looking for and then if we're interested we go or we call them very simple. We get you to that spot, or the business owner to that spot, um, and that's really our. And we once you're up there, we keep you up there, because Google's algorithms change all the time. You know, they're all they're constantly changing. So, that being said, the business that I'm with right now, uh, I will say I like them because they are very. They actually do the work mm -hmm. to get you there. And they actually like they're really good on the customer service side. Oh, okay. The problem with this this industry that I looked into because I interviewed at a few different companies, the most important thing is your customer service. Is okay, hold on. You know, if, if they don't like it, are you gonna give them a refund? What goes on with that? You know, that type of thing. Oh, hey, it's been a month. I don't see anything. Why am I not seeing any results? Okay, we'll we'll handle that for you, and then they take care of it. So those types of things are what's more important the front end sale yes it's kind of difficult but it's not that hard you can get it very fairly, fairly easy because most businesses need some sort of online presence and for certain industries mainly retail stores would want to be on that top the top seven right uh, any other questions about that no that's okay so it's, I mean, it is what it is, but back to the telemarketing, it's fucking crazy. 
it's one of those things I'm like, wow, the people there are very... Thick-skinned? Yes. Or they've hidden it very well. Like, it's gotten to the point where, like, they just don't even, like, it doesn't phase them. Because, like, man, the first time I got cussed out, I was kind of like, what the hell? <laughs> right? Or, or like, you get calls where people just, like, yell into the phone. Like, not, they don't want to say anything. They're just like, ah! And I was like, oh. <laughs> oh okay. What? <laughs> yeah, like, they just literally just yell, like, at the top of their lungs into the phone. Oh, okay. It's like, huh. Okay, sure. So it's, yeah, you do get, I will not lie, you get frustrated sometimes. But when you make a sale, it's, it's also one of those like, oh, shoot, I made a sale. Cool. It you know? sounds like it's way harder than picking up girls. Like, way harder. Well, it's definitely uh, hard, yeah, to make the sale. Well, it's different from picking up girls as in it's your, your end result, right? Closing. The close is money and not, you know, hooking up with them. Yeah. You know, so it's a different motivation. If you're money motivated and that's what you want, uh -huh. it's fun. Like uh -huh. the guy that I'm working with uh -huh. right now, but the guy that I'm that I sit next to, he's actually just got hired on from another company, and he's supposed to be like he wanted to be their sales manager and te teach people how to do sales. But uh -huh. right now they're like, well, if you're so good, prove it. So he's with us doing it, and he's this guy is pretty freaking good, man. Oh, really? Yeah, like he oh. can. He can turn, he can flip, uh, like people will be like, oh no, I don't want it, just take me off the list, and he'll turn them into a customer. Whoa. But that's because he's been in this industry and he understands SEO. Like, I don't really Ooh. understand SEO. He understands how Google works, what their algorithms are, and what we, what service we provide. I'm still kind of like, wow. what are you should we learn doing? from this guy. I am, I sit right next really? to him. That's so awesome. Yeah, like, tell me some stuff. I have a good that's cool. Yeah, like he's he's uh, and he's like really friendly. He has like a very friendly voice. Oh really? But he talks really fast and he educates and gives value to people. Yeah. So that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to like educate them and give them value, right? Uh -huh. Like, look, you know, basically his his whole thing is like, I'm gonna help you get new business. Uh -huh. People that are gonna search these keywords, they're gonna find you on the top, and what they're gonna do is they're gonna click and they're gonna call you. That in turn is gonna bring you new business, mm -hmm. right? Don't you want new business? You do have to invest in order to, you know, it's, it's a form of advertising, yeah. just like Facebook advertising, just like any other, if you put your ad in the yellow pages, the actual phone book, they charge you for that. Newspaper listings, right? Craigslist even, there's listings that you have to pay for. Certain ones, not all of them. But it's very interesting to see, like, he's, and he just, like, he grunt, like, he goes, like, he's very, very motivated. Mm -hmm. But what I've noticed in the industry, it's purely money motivation. That's it. Like there is not much of a service oriented, you know, there's not a real serve, they're not really service oriented. It's more money oriented. It's like, all right, I'll do what I have to do to get your credit card number. Okay. At least that's the way that they present themselves. Maybe deep inside, that's not how they feel. But if we were to put it into game wise right? we're talking about picking up girls and it's like hey I'll pretend to be the nice guy and do everything you want and take you out to dinner as long as we can you know go back to my place or your place or whatever Wait, I'm just comparing it to like let's say I talk to a girl in a bar like no girl is gonna like start yelling at the top of or like slap you just because you said hi <laughs> but when you're a telemarketer yeah. there are people who just cuss you out just by Yes, in general, in general. No, well, it depends though. That oh, depends, really? Chris, because there are girls who I, I mean, there are girls where I've been, where I've approached and not in a way that they were being like mean. It was oh. just that they get, they, uh, for example, if, um, this is a story that my friend told me. Okay. He, he was, he's actually a friend of this girl and they're walking down, there's, this is during college time. They're walking down the street, walking back to their apartment and he was driving by and he rolled down his window and he was like, hey, you know, Julie or whatever her name was and was like, hey, you wanna, uh, do you wanna ride? I'll give you a ride to your dorm. And he's an actual friend of her, so he knows her. Uh -huh. But then she was walking with a friend and her friend just went up to him and was like, will you stop it? We don't need a fucking ride. Like just started cussing him out because they had been hit on so much. Uh -huh. So many guys had already asked them to give him a ride and they had already rejected, but he just happened to be like the fourth or fifth guy. Uh -huh. 
and his friend, they were actually friends, and then her friend came in and was like, hey, no, 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 I, I know him, it's okay. <laughs> and the friend was like, oh, okay, sorry. So it does happen too. Oh, okay. Once it gets irritating enough. Okay. Right. But, yes, in general, you're not going to go to, yeah, if you go to a club or a bar or anything, you hit on a girl, they're not just, yeah, they're definitely not going to just, ah! <laughs> right? They're not going to just scream in your face. And they're not going to just start cussing, stop fucking talking to me. No, most likely they're not, especially if you just say hello. <laughs> you know what I mean? But it's, um, it's over the phone, so it's, it's kind of like you, you don't take it as personal. Like when I was doing door to door, when they slam the door in your face, it's pretty like, okay, like that was directly towards me. When it's on the phone, it's very, you could just, you know, when they go off, sometimes I just, you know, I just hang up. Now I get it, you know, there's people that just, oh, okay, just hang up. You know, when people start going off on you, okay, just hang up. So, it's a very uh, interesting experience, a new experience. What I can say is I don't like it very much. It does suck. And um, it works, though. The, the thing is, it, it works. You can adapt to it. I mean, at the end of the day, it's a simple job. You get paid decent. And you don't really... I don't know. I don't know. I can't really say anything more than that. It's very different from what I'm used to. So... That being said, how was your week? Um, well, I've been doing something called Project Joy, where I've been focusing on stuff that makes me happy. Yeah, um, that's so cool. Just in terms of work, I've been doing a lot of new listings on Etsy. Cool. Uh, putting a lot of different... Um, what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> search, search terms and stuff. So it's like some, I think some girl was saying, she asked me like, oh, do you have any tips? You know, and I was like, oh, you know, you should put in like the popular search terms like uh, Elsa or Disney or Frozen or Batman or something like exactly. that. And then I was like, wait a second, I don't even do that. You know? <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I can do that. I was just kind of too lazy not to because it's a lot of work. Yeah. For every search term, I have to create like a new listing and a different picture. So I'm like, okay, let's do that because... Um, people who search those terms, that's what they're going to want to see. Absolutely. And people, exactly it's going to help people get what they want. Mm -hmm. um, I think another thing I was a little bit concerned about is she was like, oh, you know, I'm afraid of like copyright infringement and stuff. Mm. And you know, like that's something that popped into my mind too. Because technically it's illegal, I think it's illegal to use those terms. As it, mm. as it's just, it's, it's illegal to use... Um, drive, it's illegal to drive 60 fixed miles per hour on the freeway, you know, you, mm -hmm. you're not supposed to, like, people can give you a ticket, but people do it anyways. Mm -hmm. On Etsy, people, um, people have all types of, um, Disney princess hat, Disney princess costume, you know. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think it's technically trademark infringement, mm -hmm. but I think Disney and stuff, they usually turn a blind eye because it's, like, handmade, and it's not like they're mass manufacturing them. Right. Um, it's like... I think it's also like people smoke a lot of pot and weed. Yeah. And even though it's illegal, it's, it's not really like enforced. It's yeah. Right. I think I don't know. Maybe it's taste or judgment. It's like I guess by using terms like Mickey Mouse, I guess it's copyright infringement and it's illegal. But hmm, interesting. I didn't know that. From like from on the other hand, from a moral standpoint, do I feel bad about it? I don't. You know, it seems like everyone else is doing it, so it's okay. So it's accepted. So, I, I don't know. So technically, it's probably against the law to have Mickey Mouse, you know, because it's a trademark. But at the same time, uh, is it really hurting anyone? You know, it's probably not hurting yeah, Disney. It's not hurting Disney. I don't think they're hurt <laughs> <laughs> because you're making... Um, but it is against the rules, I think, if, if okay. you were to go black and white on it. Okay. Um, so it's against the rules to drive over 65 right. miles. So you could, basically you could get a ticket for it, or you could mm -hmm. get a, a, a fine or some sort of or violation. Cease and desist. Uh, uh, cease and desist, right. I think mean, that's what happens first. If, yeah, uh -huh. and, but right now it's probably not going to get to that until you're, you probably have to reach a certain mark where uh -huh. it's like, oh, okay, hold on. 
you know, you're making millions of dollars now instead of, you know, a few thousand, then they're uh -huh. going to start like, wait, we, we, we need some of that. Either you're going to merge with them uh -huh. or they're going to say, you better stop if you don't give us our royalties or whatever. Uh -huh. right? Yeah, I think professional artists do that too. Even artists who work for Disney and Marvel, mm -hmm. they will sell prints of like Captain America painting, you know, mm -hmm. and it's kind of like it's the original artwork and it's using their trademark, but, you know, it's kind of a gray area, I heard. Okay. As long as it's not a direct copy, you have to change it more than 30% or something. Okay. I, I'm not really sure. Yeah, but, that's very difficult, especially when you're coming, uh, when you're dealing with stuff online, too. Uh -huh. That's a very, like, gray area. Like, because I've been doing internet marketing, and it's like, well, there's certain words and there's certain copy that people use all the time. Mm -hmm. Is that considered copyright infringement? If I, like, for example, in a email that people will always you know they'll always have some sort of sales pitch and you get what's called swipes and if you use the same words mm -hmm. you could technically be uh, caught if they find out for plagiarism oh plagiarism I yeah see. for plagiarism literally like if you write the same like let's say you're writing an article on health right there's only so many things you can write about eating juicing exercising and if I talk about exercise and I say these this is the new six minute workout six minute shift workout right and it's about doing push-ups and crunches and sit-ups everybody does sit-ups and crunches is that you know infringement on anything or if I write the article in a way that's very similar to somebody else who wrote it is that considered plagiarism so that's I don't know I've been looking at that because I've been looking at a lot of different copy I've been looking at the different you know, magazine headlines and stuff because they're very, you know, eye-catching. So I use some of those in my emails and I'm not sure, like, is that legal? Is that illegal? I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but that's kind of a different, sorry, that's a different tangent. No, I, I, yeah, I think it's similar, like, concept artists. I think nowadays, um, there's a really gray area because it's like people... Uh, professional artists like for Avatar or for Maleficent they would take photos of skies of different things and they would put it in their paintings there was recently an artist called Craig Mullins okay. he's really he's one of the most famous yeah yeah artists. I think I've heard of him and um, basically what happened was he used a, a another another person's painting like a picture of the sea and he put it in his own painting and kind of changed it a little bit in Photoshop mm. so basically it's like right. basically if you took a picture of you and put it in his photograph, but he changed it so like he changed it so that it, he made it his own. Uh huh. But when people look at it and they compare it side by side, it's like you stole that. It's, it's very totally black you can totally and white. tell. You, you can know, totally like, tell. That's, that's, you just that's just that and picture, you, and you just replace it. You just added a little bit. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And um. So what happened um, with that? Did he ever? Is, did he get in trouble for that or no? I don't think so. Probably not right. I think just people online were like, oh, you know, uh, it, it was really controversial. You know, a lot of the artists was like, yeah, I don't give a fuck. Some people were like, oh my God. You yeah. Know. He, a lot of people liked him, you know, so a lot of people defended him. Right. But if people didn't like him, you know, I think they, you, they could. You could. Well, it's, and, and this goes in a lot of different industries, right? I, uh, music. Mm -hmm. right, Sampling. On, right? Samples. Right. Or even like beats that were made. Like you get so many lawsuits in uh -huh. like you took, oh, that was my beat from, you know, that was my melody back in, you know, a lot of people take the oldies uh -huh. melodies and then they put it into the new version and they add like a bass and it becomes like a hip hop track. Okay. Um, you know, and, and you get people that are like, oh, well, no, that's, that's, that, that's from that song. You know, that instrumental is from that song and you just took it from that and it's like, there's only so many notes you can play, <laughs> you oh, know? Okay. I mean, and there's only so many beats that you can have, but you're going to... as long, I think if you change it up where it's a variation of it, it, mm -hmm. it no longer becomes an original. Mm -hmm. Right? Even if it's a slight change. Like in, in copy, when you're writing copy, as long as you can copy and paste the whole thing, but if you change a few words, it no longer becomes plagiarism. And it's very, very simple. I mean, at the same time, it's not that creative but sometimes those are the pieces that you know that's the copy that works that's the copy that sells so it's very very gray it's a very gray area but tell me more about this project joy because that sounds that sounds oh fun. okay yeah <laughs> sure man so um 
I've been trying to like, what can I do today that's fun, you know? And every night I write down like, what was like the funnest thing or the thing I enjoyed the most. Okay, cool. And I realized what I'd usually write is like, oh, going to the zoo or going for a walk. Okay. Or going bike riding or going swimming. Okay, so doing know? something. Um, or going somewhere. Yeah, I mean, it's just fun. I was, it wasn't, I think swimming especially is very, I have to be present. Uh -huh. Because when you are swimming, it's basically, you're not going anywhere. <laughs> right. You're really present that I'm going to swim back and forth. Yeah. And one time I swam 70 laps in like a really small pool. Oh, you know, And I felt really good. But the thing is like, you know that you're not getting some. When you're running, it's like, I'm running right. and I'm being productive. Right. When you're swimming, you're, you know that you're not going anywhere. But you're, you're doing it anyways. You're going back and forth. You're going back and forth. Yeah. And then I think that knowing helps give me, hey, you're just here for the act of swimming right you're not getting from point a to point b you're just really here uh, doing it so being really just being in the moment yeah and really in the present just yeah like really i'm not focused. here to accomplish something wait maybe you swim like 70 laps sure okay maybe but it's a really big awareness that you're not trying to you know you're not getting anywhere you're just <laughs> enjoying the moment right and i think that's really important to being happy just enjoying the moment absolutely i think that's a great tip that's um, what would you what would you advise someone to like really be in the moment how do you really be in the moment because that seems to be a very common theme these days right be in the moment be in the present really just like and i hear like okay just breathe just focus on your breath and it's like breathing like you know and just really get into it and what, what would you suggest um well i i think what's worked for me is at the end of every day i write down what was the best part of my day you know okay because a lot of people <clears throat> like these breathing tips those i think by writing down the best part of the day you kind of review the entire day mm -hmm. and you you review the part that Stood you like the most, the most. Okay. And then the next time you're doing that, I feel like I'm more present. I'm like, ah, or something. It's, I see. Okay, so that's a, that's a pretty cool tip, it's, right? So write down the best part of the day every uh -huh. night. Yeah. Okay, cool. And then would you do like, would you say like list the top three or are you just focusing on one or it just depends? Whatever, Sometimes whatever I write up to five. Like okay. if I'm like, I watched the movie, I did this, I did that, I did that. I'm like, cool. Today, there were so many things okay. that I liked, cool. you know? And um, it helps gratitude, gratitude, it helps being Yep, yep, gratitude. absolutely. And if it's like really simple, like there's only one thing I like today, I'll just write that. If today really sucked, yeah, this is yes. where it's good. If it today really, really sucked, uh -huh. right? You, and then you think, what was the best part of my day? Right. And then you'd write something like eating cereal. That was literally the best part of my day. Okay, okay. But then you're like, hey, that was a pretty good cereal I ate today. <laughs> <laughs> ah, I see how you Then like it's like, that. hey, this day wasn't so bad. Right, right, right. And then you gotta, and then you gotta focus on, so next time you eat cereal, then are you more present? Like, are you, when you're eating the cereal, it's like, wow, this, hey, this cereal's really darn good right Yeah, now. yeah, you, I think I get a little bit more present. Okay. Instead of just thinking this is cereal, but it was like the other day, this was the best part of my day. Right. And it really helps you enjoy it. So maybe your mind has a connection when you're writing what you enjoy a lot. And then, right. So then it's kind of like planted a seed in your subconscious. Next time it happens, you're like, oh yeah, I remember yesterday I wrote about how good this cereal was. And now I'm going to be more present enjoying it. Because I like what right now for me, uh -huh. I notice... Uh, dude, my highlight of the day was I came home and I was, I was going to drink a beer just cause I was like so frustrated okay. <laughs> yeah. and, I, and that was going to be my, you know, highlight of my day. I uh -huh. thought at least in my mind, yeah. that's what I was yeah. thinking. But then I came home and Paling was like, Hey, you want an ice cream cone? I was like, ice cream. Okay, sure. Well, <laughs> I beer. took, yeah, I took, the, I was like, okay, cool now. And I actually went to the refrigerator to get uh -huh. the beer and then she's yeah. like, no, 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 it's in the freezer. I'm like. Oh, okay, cool. And I looked in the freezer and it was the drumsticks. And oh, I was like, cool. ooh, drumsticks. All right, cool. And I was like, I haven't had one of these in like five years uh -huh. or so. And I took it out and I just like, as I ate, I was like, this is pretty dang good. <laughs> this drumstick is pretty awesome. It's got the, the chocolate in it. You know, it's got like the vanilla and it's got uh -huh. the chocolate over with the, the nuts on yeah. top. And then, yeah. you know, I ate it and then I got down into the, like, like the cone had chocolate in it. I was like, wow, it's got fucking chocolate. <laughs> you know, just like simple things uh -huh. like that. Um, and also real estate, like I, I'm loving real estate again oh, after dude. doing this. It's like, oh, real estate is so much better. Like I don't need to do anything, like not that I don't need to do anything, but I'm talking to people that, 
you know, because before I thought, oh, real estate is stressful because this happens and that happens and the deal doesn't go through and oh, it's so frustrating. F it, right? Yeah. Now I'm like, take me back to real. <laughs> I, I will take a rejection on a house any day. Like, you don't want it? That's cool. Let's get the next one. Not even worry. You're not yelling in my face. You're not cursing at me. Cool, man. And the payout's a lot higher. Yeah. You know, uh, it takes a little bit longer, obviously, but it's a bigger sale. But it's, you know, I'm like, wow, real estate is a lot more fun. Mm -hmm. I enjoy it more. So it's, uh, it's helped me, this job, I mean, I've only been there two days, but it's helped me to realize, like, wow, you know, like, I really enjoyed what I was doing before. I, I really uh -huh. appreciate the lifestyle I had before. Yeah. And now it's like I get up early. And, and I actually appreciate that too. I do like getting up oh, early. Oh, yeah, yeah. I like that too. You know, like waking yeah. up at 6 in the morning. I mean, even though it's going to a job that I don't <laughs> love, it's, you know what? It's cool. Like I was up. It's good to say, yeah, I got up at 6 and started work at 7.30, worked all the way to 4.30, and now I'm here doing this. You know, ate an ice cream too. So all in all, a good day. Mm -hmm. I, I kind of like it when your day has the ending, a start and the ending. I, I really like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, see, and that's, that's kind of hard for me to do on my own. It was yeah. kind of open-ended. Yeah, that's something I don't like about being an entrepreneur. Unless you have a discipline to yeah, do that yourself. That, that's hard. That's uh -huh. pretty, pretty hard. Do you, I mean, you're pretty disciplined, right? Do you have a start and an end to your day, or do you kind of... I guess go with the flow in that in, in that sense or do you have like set schedules where you're like okay it's you know no the set schedule thing when I'm doing my own schedule it doesn't work for me yeah it doesn't right? all I do is I have a to-do list uh -huh. and I say what is like the one most important thing okay one three most important things I need to do okay and that's when things get done got it um the set schedule thing doesn't tend to work for me when I'm doing things on my own okay and, so you do a you do a to do list and then you pick out the priorities. So it's kind of like uh, reminds reminds me. Have you read that book Eat Eat That Frog by Brian Tracy? No, no. Okay, so basically what eating the frog is what you do is is you just basically pick out you write down your little to do list and the frog is the thing that you don't want to do the most that's most important. Oh. So you take care of the biggest things first. So you just like when he says eat that frog, it's just like all right, I'm just gonna knock this one out now. I don't care about anything else. This is the one thing I need to accomplish today. And that's considered eating the frog. I don't know. I kind of, I think Steve Jobs had this thing. It was like, if I were to die today, what is the one thing I want to do? Okay. And then that's how I, it's something that I enjoy. Okay. Like if I don't want to do it, I'll, I, won't, I won't force myself to do it. Not anymore. Ah, got you it. You know? Okay, fair enough. I, that's not how I live my life. But it is important, I think, like, 80-20 rule. What is the most important thing? A little Tim Ferriss, you know? Yeah, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. Yeah. The most important thing that you need to do. I, I'm uh -huh. not saying eat that frog as in sacrifice yourself. Yeah. Maybe that's how it came off. Uh-huh. But it is... Because it's a frog. Why would <laughs> eat the frog? But yeah, these are all different valid things. We got Brian Tracy. We talked about Steve Jobs. We talked about Tim Ferriss. It's a cool conversation. Yes, yes. It's good. It's good, man. Um... Let's see. Okay, so let's let's brainstorm a little bit. Let's just see what can we focus on for next week. Okay, what what about every day we imagine, we ask ourselves, if I were to die today, what would I want to do? Every day we have like a thing and we make a list of seven things like, if I were to die today, what is the one thing that I'd want to do? Okay. And we do that for seven days. Okay. If I were to die today, what's the one thing I want to Sometimes do? it's like, I want to make a phone call to someone, or email to someone, or do this one thing, or go somewhere. Or it could be really small, like, right. I just want to watch this television show, you know? Hmm. I really want to watch MasterChef, because I want to see the season finale. I don't know. Okay, okay, like, that's it cool. It could be, but it's like, if I were to die today, what do I want to do? Or say sorry to someone, or right, forgive someone, right, right. apologize. Um... What do you think? I think that's a good idea. I like well, what I'm. What's weird is this. Here's what's weird, because I think it's a great idea, but my brain is saying I'm not gonna die tomorrow. <laughs> that's what my brain is telling me, but it's 
I think it's a good idea because I'm thinking, okay, if I were to die tomorrow, I'm just trying to think of it right now. Okay, okay. so if I were going to die tomorrow, the one thing I want to do right now in this moment okay. is get drunk. <laughs> that is the one thing I want to do right now. I'm not lying. Now, is so, see the question, okay. you, you see what I'm saying? Because right. if I knew I was going to live, I might make a different decision. Hmm, interesting. Health wise, right? Like, okay. okay, I know if I get drunk tonight, I'm not gonna wake up tomorrow, I won't be able to go to work. Uh, and oh. it's just not good for my health. But it's what I fucking wanna do right now. And if I die, fuck it. That's when I'm, I'm gonna die drunk. You know what I mean? And I know, like, oh. it's really weird. I, like, I don't know, is that weird? Like, my brain, that's how my brain is functioning right now. Because I normally don't want to do that. Like, that's not something I want to do, and I don't know if it's the effect of the position I'm in right now. Uh-huh. Right? Because it'd be, it'd be great. Like, oh, cool, I don't have to go to work anymore. I okay, just... hold on. What if it was your last day on Earth? Like, okay. tomorrow, you are transported to another dimension. So you're still going to be alive tomorrow, but okay. you're not going to be around these people. Kind of like Dragon Ball Z. Okay. How Goku goes to different dimensions. Yes, okay. So you're going to have that hangover tomorrow. You just won't be here with everyone. Okay, so if it was a health thing, let's... So if... Okay, so if I knew I was still going to live, but I would not be in this world? Yeah, someone is going to take you to a different... De and I don't know, and, and I can't take anybody with me. No. Oh, it's like okay. if you got drafted for, like, the Vietnam War or yeah. something. You know, like, oh, what would you do okay. on your last day? You never see... You might, okay, then you I would... never see any of Then I would people. probably call my parents. Uh-huh. I'd probably... You know, spend my night with Bridget. Uh huh. Probably call a couple friends. Probably text, text okay. like, "Hey, I'm going to the next dimension. <laughs> uh, meet me there. I hope to see you there one day. If not, thank Dude, you." Text some people that. I'm totally trippy now. <laughs> yeah, I'll see you in the next dimension. <laughs> I'm out of here. Peace. Um. Yeah, man. Say goodbye on Facebook <laughs> or something. Just kind of like a farewell. Uh, but really, the the if it was one one thing, one thing, it would probably be to call my parents mm. and you know tell them thank you and I love them and I'm you know I'm going to another dimension mm -hmm. and then get drunk after that. Because <laughs> <laughs> you do realize this isn't like a make believe story. This is reality. Like a uh, given, e yeah, yeah. Easily, someone could die at any moment. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, car accident. Yeah, nine one one. Yeah, like, look at that. Yeah, you know, nine like, eleven. You, know, you never know. No, I know, and I, and I, that's the thing is, I've experienced uh, people. You know, I've had friends literally die, just get shot, car accidents. Um, you know, senseless gang warfare. People get locked up for you know people. That, you know, I know people in jail that are still in jail. You know, from a long time ago, and it's like those relationships are physically gone, mm -hmm. you know, in an instant like that. So maybe that's something that I need to look at as far as appreciation, you know, and, and same thing with my folks, man. They're not getting any younger. Uh, they're in their, you know, they're going to get up close to, to you know, almost 70. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of the biggest, that's my biggest one that's resonating with me right now as far as emotions go that's a good question though i like that what so i actually prefer the vocabulary <laughs> what is the one thing that we do if you were to leave this earth okay i like that i like okay. that better than if you were to die because you know when you think die like my brain doesn't really i can't not that i can't resonate with but i, I can't like like my brain can't can't uh, what's wrap around it? Uh -huh. like my head can't wrap around death. Yeah. Like what's death? You know what I mean. But to leave this earth, that I can kind of relate to. It's like even if my just my soul were to leave this earth. <clears throat> okay, we could do that. All right. So if it were today, I'd probably call my parents, and I'm probably now gonna call my parents later. Right. Bucket list every day of the week. Yeah, that's cool. Nice. I like that. Bucket list. So what would you do if you were to leave? this earth like what's the one thing that you would do hmm what's coming to mind is that my parents are building a home mm -hmm. and they asked me to write some emails I'll probably write those emails for them okay mm. 
done most of the stuff, but I probably want to finish up some of their last requests. Perfect. Mm -hmm. See, so it goes back to family, I guess. Parents. Yeah, helping others, uh, filling, tying up the loose end. Even though they can probably write the email themselves. Right. But it's kind of like, um, yeah, there's some things that I, I, I want to put out there. I think a while ago, I wanted to write this blog on how to get a job. Mm -hmm. You know, I think I posted it, maybe, it, no, I don't really feel like posting it. <laughs> Why yeah, not? I don't know, it's just... That's a big, uh, that's a pretty big niche there. A lot of people need that. Yeah, maybe I'll post a follow-up or something. I just didn't really feel like it. Yeah, I know. Blogs are, man, blogs are pretty challenging to follow up with, I've noticed. Yeah. I mean, we're doing pretty good. We've been uh -huh. doing it on a weekly basis, but I think is you definitely keep me accountable. Because <laughs> if you were doing that, I probably wouldn't do it. Yeah. Um, and that's that's pretty cool because I, I just started learning a lot of internet marketing things. Uh -huh. And, man, there's... Blogs are really good. That's amazing. <sighs> yeah, I, I started using Word... Did you know there's a WordPress.org? No, wait. Yeah, most people use WordPress.org, not .com. I thought everybody used WordPress.com. Most... The, Wait, is WordPress.org better? Yes. Motherfucker, no wonder WordPress. No, no, no but but WordPress.com is free. Oh. See, that's WordPress.org is better because you have the plug. That's where you do all the plugins and you customize oh, okay, and you add the okay. themes and all these. I mean, WordPress.com, you could do the themes. It's so too. hard to use WordPress.com. Yes. I never figured it out. Yes, it, it's it's still hard to use WordPress.org. It is. But is it the same company? It's the same company. Oh, okay. It's the same company, but they have plugins. They make it. Um, it's a little bit more friendly because not because of WordPress, uh -huh. because of all the companies that have made the plugins oh. for WordPress. Okay. So I mean, I can show you in a bit, but it's everything that you need. Like so, like on WordPress, if you want something to happen, you're like, oh, I want this. I want this to do this, and I want to put a downloadable file, but I can't do it regularly. There's a plugin for it. So you got to install. So it's in that sense, it's more complicated, but once you get the plugin for it, then you just click the plugin and then it does. And it's like, oh, okay, well, shit, I just, I just needed this plugin, right? Like I created a, a, a new opt-in site using cool. WordPress and, and I bought a plugin for it. Uh -huh. So now I know how to make landing pages all the time. Oh, cool. And they're, oh. they're very simple to use. I mean, it took me a long time to get it, but once I got it, it's like, okay, now I know I could do this. I can make, right now I have it for the uh, weight loss industry. I'm going to do it. I want to do one for the um, spirituality, personal development, okay. you know, more of the life coaching okay. uh, industry. But I know how to do it now. But at the same time, WordPress.org, you do need, because you need to pay hosting. So okay. you, you need, you can't just you know, have no host, you have to have either like HostGator or um, Bluehost, one of those hosting companies actually host it for you. Hmm. And yeah, I, I learned a lot about internet marketing, man. It was... Uh, at your job? No, oh, I did this on my own. Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, because I wanted to get a new, like, I wanted a site and I wanted a, really I wanted an, a landing page, okay. like a really, like a professional looking opt-in page. So I bought this program thinking it was going to work with WordPress.com. Okay. Did it. And I'm like, where is the plugin? Where is this plugin? So I started like Googling stuff and then I found out, oh, you got to go to WordPress.org. I'm like, oh my God. And then I'm like, all right, cool. And then I realized, oh, but if you needed that, then you need to have a domain name and a hosting site. Oh. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. So then I had to get a hosting and then a domain name and then I installed the program and then you have to have like all these different things. I had to learn how to use the plugin. I need to, it's, but now I know. So I guess it's worth it, but it's the possibilities. Now that I know, it's like, wow, what WordPress can do. Like now I get how, like when you see like Marie Forley or Brendan Bouchard, like, you know, how, when you see a really good, like professional website yeah it's just the theme <laughs> right oh. now i realize oh my god that's just the freaking theme they just bought that and they inserted the pictures and they changed the colors themselves that's all they did I'm like wow and it probably what cost them a 100 bucks to get that theme 
I was thinking like they had a designer and they freaking like you know like you know like you you'll you'll see on a lot of a lot of um, uh, professional websites they have like it's a lot of it's a scroll down right you have like uh -huh. these big pictures all HD and then all these words and then you have your opt-in box and then you go down and you have your articles and you go down and here's the blog and you go down and it's it's just really like elaborate but it's really nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, okay, now I know I can do it if I want and it's not that expensive. Cool. Congratulations. Yeah, so that's that was kind of cool. Especially for like you too, like you could do that for your thing. <laughs> yeah. Now I'll take a look at your um Yeah, let's 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 take a look. Sure. We'll show in the video. Alright. Alright man. Alright, so this week we're gonna focus on What's the one thing you want to do or you would do if it were your last day on this earth? You're going to leave this earth. See you next week. Bye. Right. Yeah.